grab our Bibles very quickly, church family. Let's grab our Bibles very quickly. Wave that Bible in the air. Repeat the confession after me. Say, this is my Bible. I believe it's the infallible, incorruptible word of the living God. I believe I am whom he says I am. And I can do what he says I can do. I opened up my heart this day to receive from God's holy word. And I declare that it will profit and prosper my life. Faith comes and increases in me as a result of God's holy word. Amen. And for those of you who are joining us, we just love to do a confession at the Kingdom Faith Church. So just bear with us. Praise God. All right. We're going to go into our opening text today. So if you can turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 1. Turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I'm going to be reading uh, some verses from Acts chapter 1. Praise the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 1. I'm going to be reading from verses 4 to 8, and then I will continue from 12 to 14. Verses 4 to 8 and 12 to 14. I read. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now let's jump forward to verse 12, and I'll continue. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of of James verse 14 this all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers praise the name of the Lord my brothers and sisters from wherever you're watching all over the world I know you must agree with me that this last pandemic has surely been a wake-up call for our whole world. No doubt about it. Whether the, you, know, you believe in God, you don't believe in God, however you believe, it has been a wake-up call. It's called a pandemic because it has affected the entire globe. Now, the question is not whether it's a wake-up call, but the real question is, Wake up call to do what? You see, truly, right now, some Christians are afraid. Some believers in Christ are afraid of death, and even unbelievers too. Others are thinking the world is about to come to an end. And I notice that many preachers are beginning to teach eschatology. Now, the truth is, many of us are not really sure what do we do now? We've seen our world shaken like never before. And we're thinking, okay, so what do I do? When this blows over, how do I proceed with life? What do I do next? You see, I want you to understand that similarly, when Jesus was crucified, died and resurrected. It was an incident that shook the whole of Jerusalem. Literally, the Bible said there was an earthquake. And I know that afterwards, there were some people who had heard him teach who were afraid. Some were afraid that they might end up dying like him. 
Some were beginning to think maybe it's the end of the world. And there were others also who were just confused. What do we do next? Now the Bible tells us about a group who went straight into the upper room. But notice, not everybody who heard Jesus went into an upper room. I believe it was because they lacked prophetic insight of the season to know exactly what to do. So I ask you, my brothers and sisters listening to me this morning, where are you today? Are you in an upper room or are you confused? See, today I believe the Lord sent me here to come and talk to you about the importance of an upper room season. But most importantly, to encourage somebody today to fully receive all that God wants you to receive in your upper room experience. I've titled my message this morning, Completing Your Upper Room Experience. Praise the name of the Lord. Completing Your Upper Room Experience experience. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you once again for your word. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for your anointing, your grace upon my life to teach the word and the grace for every listener to receive, to understand your word today. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. So my opening text, I just want to take a moment to do a little bit of exegesis of this opening text because I realized that a clear understanding of this dialogue that Jesus had with his disciples will help us to understand the purpose for going in the upper room and the kingdom mandate that was at hand. Now listen to me very carefully. Number one, the agenda of the dialogue was restoration of God's kingdom rule in their region or nation. In other words, I want you to notice that they were not asking Jesus about going to heaven. Their question was not, Jesus, where you are going? Can we just come with you? Let's just escape right now. Remember, Jesus had told them about things that were to come, including the persecution, including the destruction of Jerusalem. But the dialogue, I want you to pay attention to that. The dialogue that this man were having with Jesus was not about how can we escape, how can we go to heaven. But it was more about when will the kingdom that you're talking about be established here so that we can have dominion in the affairs of the earth and do what you've asked us to do. Number two. Their obedience to the right instruction from Jesus will determine the timing of the transformation and restoration they sought. Remember they asked Jesus, when will it be? And Jesus said, it's not in your, or in a sense, almost saying it's not your business to know the exact time. You just go do what I'm asking you to do. In other words, their obedience to the right instruction was going to determine the timing for the restoration they are waiting for. Just like I believe today that for us children of God that are on the earth, our obedience, our ability to have prophetic insight, listening to the now word of God from heaven, his instruction, and our ability to obey this word would determine the timing of the things that are to come. Number three. Receiving the power of the Holy Ghost was the prerequisite to becoming effective witnesses for the Christ and his kingdom message. Clearly, Jesus said, if you guys are going to be effective in being a witness of me and my message, you're going to first receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Acts 1.8, and ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Number four, the transformation or restoration assignment was to be in phases. The transformation or restoration assignment was to be in phases. Another thing that we need to understand as the children of God today, it said you will be witness first in Jerusalem, meaning your immediate city, then next, Judea. Judea is the province. So you go from your immediate city and then you affect the province. And then to Samaria and the utmost parts of the earth. So in other words, you then go to the, the adjacent nation, the next nation, until you pervade or totally fill the whole earth with this gospel 
of the kingdom. We must understand that our transformation and restoration assignment is supposed to be in phases. Number five, the upper room season was meant to be temporary. The upper room season was meant to be temporary. In other words, the completion of this season is dependent on receiving everything that Jesus wanted them to receive. But they were not to be in the upper room forever. And that's one for you, members of the Kingdom Faith Church, that have been worshipping. We've been worshipping together in an upper room. We literally call our building the upper room for those of you who are joining us. And we've been having a wonderful time in the upper room. But I want to remind you, it was for a season. All right? Now, just with that better understanding of the dialogue that Jesus was having with his disciples, I have this question. So why tarry in the upper room? Why go to the upper room? Why tarry in the upper room? Two main things that I want you to pay attention to. Number one, to receive transformation within your soul through the Holy Spirit's indwelling and the fruit development. Why do we need an upper room season? Number one, to receive transformation within. John chapter 16 verse 13. Turn to it very quickly and if you're not fast enough, just write it down and you can go check it later on. In John chapter 16, Jesus began to teach his disciples about the person of the Holy Spirit and the assignment of the Holy Spirit. And in the 13th verse he said, however he... The spirit of truth has come. He or when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things that are to come. So we need the Holy Spirit. When he dwells on the inside of us, he begins to teach us truth. He begins to open up revelation to us. Apocalypse, the unveiling of truth that we're not able to understand with our natural mind. We need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, not just to understand truth, but also to develop the fruits that affect our character and make us better witnesses. For example, if you turn in your Bible to Galatians chapter 5, you would see some of this fruit that the Holy Spirit will help us develop. Starting from the 22nd verse, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If I were just to stop with that first one, love, love is so key. You see, God knew and Jesus the Son knew that these men and women needed to have an upper room experience because it's in your upper room experience that you develop the kind of character that is necessary for you to want to be a witness for Christ. And that character you develop also in itself also makes you a witness. Because love, for example, is the motive for ministry. The true motive for ministry must be love. I know, and I, I know it's true that in our world today, there are people who do quote and unquote ministry for a different agenda. They say they're parts of the world where people do it for a living. I even hear that some people do it because they just want to be seen, they want to be known, they want to be heard. And I know that there's the danger of, of people who just love attention. Sometimes they can become addicted to ministry. They don't know when to quit. They just have to keep doing, doing, doing because they love people recognizing them, people acknowledging them, people telling them how special they are because of what they do. But the real reason why you and I should want to be a witness is our love for God, love for his kingdom, love for his agenda in the earth, and love for people. So I said, why tarry in the upper room, number one, to receive transformation within your soul. But then number two is to receive transforming power transforming power that can be used to demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom 
of God. So as God is changing you on the inside, as you're growing in relationship and fellowship with him, as you're growing in the fruits while you're in the upper room, you're also supposed to grow in power and authority. Why? When out of love you decide to begin to do what is necessary to impact the lives of other people, remember, you're going to face opposition. There is the gates of hell that Jesus said will not prevail against the uh, ecclesia, but understand that gate exists. There is spiritual contention, spiritual warfare. The people you're going to minister to, many of them are bound by the powers of the wicked one. And if you're going to be able to set those people free, you need power. Are you with me? You see these guys come out of the upper room and a good example happened in Acts chapter 3 from verses 1 to 8 where the Bible talked about how Peter and John went to the temple and at the gate beautiful they found this man who was lame. Now I want you to pay attention to one statement that Peter made in Acts chapter 3 and in the 6th verse to see why it's so important that we are empowered within us we need that transformation power within us that we can give out to demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom of God in the sixth verse the Bible said then Peter said silver and gold I do not have but what I have or what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk so Peter performs a miracle that is beyond anything that people can explain away. You know, later on, the, the people in the temple were wild by it. They said, these guys have done a notable miracle. We cannot argue about the power. But what I want you to pay attention to is the statement that Peter made that silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give to you. What I do have, I carry on the inside of me power to undo the wicked works of the enemy so why tarry in the upper room one because of transformation you should experience within as you grow in his word as you learn more about him as you grow in intimacy as you become a man or a woman of God in character and number two the Holy Spirit's indwelling also brings power and that power is a transforma or, or transformation power that you can use to demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. Now this morning, I want to actually break this down a little bit further by sharing with you what I consider the fruits of the upper room experience. For those of you who are in the Kingdom Faith Church family, you need to really pay attention. Because these fruits that came out of the upper room experience affected, it was demonstrable. People could show it, they could see it, they could experience what this man had received from their upper room experience. I can put them in five categories. Please write this down. If you're taking notes, write this down. If you have your phone or smart device, write this down because you're going to need to go back and over and over and over again to look at this fruit and see where you are at in your own life. The five categories is kingdom purpose, kingdom principles, kingdom power, kingdom prosperity, and kingdom peace. Again, I repeat, purpose, principles, power, prosperity, and peace. And this should be your pursuit. Your pursuit and my pursuit. Now, let me break it down a little bit more. Kingdom purpose. If you turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, I'm going to start reading from verse 40 to 47. This portion of scripture just gives us a good picture of what these men had become. These men and women who had spent time in the upper room, what they had become and what God was doing through them. Please listen carefully. Acts chapter 2 verses 40 to 47. And with many other words, Peter testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received this word were baptized, and on that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. 
Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among them all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart and praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord added to the ecclesia daily those who were being converted or saved for Christ. Now, let's look at those five categories once again. Kingdom purpose. Somebody say kingdom purpose. In Acts chapter 2 that I just read to you, 40 and 41, the Bible said that when Peter, with many words, had finished exalting them and saying be saved, the response of the people was that they gladly received the word and were baptized and 3,000 souls were added to them. Now, one thing that is very important is that we know that we are to unite under the one agenda, the one purpose of winning souls and discipling souls for Christ, kingdom purpose. Why did they have to go into the upper room? They needed to go into the upper room so that they can get a good grasp of what their purpose is. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you'll be wondering, Pastor Daniel, but everybody should know that. No, everybody does not know that. It's not every gathering that we have today that we call church that the sons and daughters of God have it on their agenda, soul winning and discipling souls. And we need to go back to that. We've been distracted with so many different programs, so many different activities, so many different agenda. As a matter of fact, if truth be told, sometimes today, even some of us ministers have become more of success coaches and motivational speakers than the preachers of the gospel of the kingdom of God. And as a result, the people that we manage to put in our sphere of influence, their heart is not beating for what the heart of God is beating for. And in this time, we need to repent. Kingdom purpose. It's important for us to understand that we need to have that pursuit and priorities in place so that it will lead us away from personal agenda. We'll be willing to give up our personal agenda and even willing to give up our personal finances when we get a good grasp of what the purpose was. So when they came out of the upper room, it wasn't very difficult for Peter to preach the first message. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter was not preaching a motivational or seeker sensitive. He went straight for the hearts of the men and the women who were around him in Jerusalem. And when he finished preaching, they said, okay, we're caught in the heart. What must we do? And said, you guys must be saved. And he got them saved. And in one day, 3,000. So when we talk about the fruits of the upper room experience, number one is kingdom purpose. When you spend time in the upper room, you should no longer be confused about kingdom purpose. And then kingdom purpose will begin to affect your own personal priorities in life. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, kingdom principles. Kingdom principles. In verse 42 of that same Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And what was the apostles' doctrine? The apostles were teaching what Jesus taught them. They were continuing in the teachings of Jesus so that they could understand the keys and the operation of the kingdom of God in the earth. Again, very important. We must understand kingdom principles. If you and I as children of God don't understand kingdom principles, we may end up actually applying the system of the world, the wisdom of the world, which is inferior to the wisdom of God. And when we hit difficult challenges, it doesn't work. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you can imagine what's going on in our world today. If all of us were operating from the same dimension of wisdom, as soon as the world experiences something that the world has not really experienced, I mean, in, in decades, I don't know, in my own lifetime, at least I've lived for a few decades, I've never known a time when we experience this kind of shutdown of people in homes and shutdown of economy and businesses like what has just recently happened in our world. Now, my biggest concern is that many of those who are leaders in nations are men of inferior wisdom and the children of God now need to step up because we are the ones who should have an understanding of kingdom principles. The principles of how we can bring the life of heaven into the earth realm. So again, what was the benefit or what was one of the fruits that they had in the upper room experience? They grew in revelation and understanding of kingdom principles. Kingdom principles. Number three, kingdom power. In Acts chapter 2, verse 43, the next verse, the Bible says, Then fear came upon all souls, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. So these men were definitely not the same men as those who went into the upper room. What Jesus said to them had happened. They had come out of the upper room. It's like Clark Kent going into the booth as an ordinary man and coming out as Superman. They had gone into the upper room as what looked like ordinary men, but when they came out of the upper room, they were different. That's why Peter could say boldly, look on me. Look at us. Silver and gold I may not have to give to you, but such as I have, such boldness, Peter knew that he carried power within. Peter had been in the upper room. Peter had, had gone through the upper room experience. Peter had been one of those who received the infilling of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of fire, which is quite missing in the body of Christ today. We still have so many denominations and so many Christians who are still arguing doctrinally against the baptism of fire. No wonder we are weak. No wonder we're not seeing healings and miracles and signs and wonders because we're trying to do stuff different from what Jesus said. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem. Tarry in the upper room until you're endued with power from on high. Many today are thinking we can do the sicker sensitive stuff. Food bank as much as you like. Do clothing to the community as much. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Yes, we can be a blessing to our community. Yes, we can help them. But that is not the all and all. We're supposed to be power packed. And so I can tell when we have not gone for the upper room experience, we have no power. So we're looking to do good works just the same as the world is doing. And I always like to say this. And many times the church is trying to do the good works does not have as much money or funds as the world systems that are funded by the government. And they can do a lot more. Why don't we come to our corner and make sure that we master what we are supposed to master first of all while we do those other good works as well. Praise the name of the Lord. So the second category of the fruit of the upper room was kingdom power. Oh, sorry. The third category is kingdom power. The fourth category, kingdom prosperity. Somebody say kingdom prosperity. Again, staying in that same Acts chapter 2, and we move on a couple of verses to verse 45. The Bible says, or even starting from 44, it says, Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possession and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. In other words, the ecclesia became, you know, started a radical move. Like the world had never seen before. That ensured that nobody in the ecclesia had lack. Look at that. It said they sold possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. In other words, everybody's need was taken care of. Ladies and gentlemen, many times we misunderstand the word prosperity and we think prosperity is talking about how many buildings can you own and how many cars can you have and how much clothing and shoes can you wear. That's not real prosperity. Real prosperity is when all needs are met. The church is not prosperous until every member of the ecclesia has their needs met. You know, God gave us a wonderful concept 
during the season of this lockdown at our church family, the Kingdom Faith Church, and we called it Be My Brother's Keeper. And we began to send text messages out almost every week just to ask in the church family if anybody had need. And in some cases, even when people didn't say they had need, it prayerfully it was revealed to us that somebody had a need. We sent them something. We made sure that nobody likes. Why? That is the ecclesia. That is part of what comes from the upper room experience. So when you see parts of the world where there are some people in the church, sometimes maybe leaders, maybe not, you know, that really wealthy, doing very well, and there's a whole bunch of other people in the church that are like peasants, something is wrong with that picture because that's not the ecclesia that Jesus started. This ecclesia had true prosperity, experienced true prosperity. And true prosperity comes out of true generosity. The believers got to the place, listen to this again, listen to this again in verse 44. He said, they said that they had all things in common. In other words, nobody wanted to be the Mr. Rich dude and look down at some other folks in the church because they're the poor ones. They all had everything in common. They made sure there was no lack. Number five, kingdom peace. In verse 46, the Bible says, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Praise the name of the Lord. Gladness and simplicity of heart. See, I always like to tell people that peace does not start from the outside. Peace starts from within. When you have peace within you, when you have gladness and simplicity of heart. You know, I realize that our world has become quite complicated. Ladies and gentlemen, there's so many things that we're going for today that our forefathers couldn't be bothered about those things. And sometimes we ourselves have given ourselves so much challenges and so much difficulty. Life can be simple. You can have this level of gladness and simplicity of heart. I'm telling you those guys in the upper room that came out and the church that was birthed. I don't think they were all about how many camels can you acquire? How many horses do you have? I don't think they were looking for gadgets or all of those things. Their focus was kingdom purpose. Their pursuit was better understanding of kingdom principles. The goal they had in their heart was to get kingdom power so they could undo the works of the wicked one. What they were enjoying was kingdom prosperity as out of generosity everybody's need was met. And the ultimate was kingdom peace. Everyone enjoying peace within their soul regardless of what the devil was doing in Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I thought about it lately, even again with the situation our world has gone through and how we were told, okay, you can't have gatherings, you cannot have church services. And one day I thought to myself, what if we had come to the very last of the last days when there will be great persecution against the church? In the days where governments may stand up and say, you can't have church. How many people know what I'm talking about? Before the Antichrist is fully manifested, it's going to be a gradual process down that way. How many of us will still have peace? How many of us will live in a country where we are being persecuted? There's persecution of believers. Christians are being hunted down and every excuse they use, they can find, they put Christians in jail. Can you still have peace and simplicity of heart? That is part of the upper room experience. Praise the name of the Lord. So now I want to ask you this question, my brothers and sisters. Every one of you watching me. Which one of these five categories have you mastered? Which one of these five categories can you say, thank you Jesus, the work is completed in me. Because I want you to have this wake up call. You see, Everybody saying, wake up call, wake up call. Wake up call to what? Wake up call to the reality of where you are at, where the ecclesia is at, and what needs to change before Jesus returns. 
It's a wake-up call for us to readjust ourselves, realign our priorities, and begin to put ourselves in shape. It's not a time to be at home and just watch movies alone or be sad because you can't go out. What else are you doing about your life? For my Kingdom Faith Church family, let me not say this too loud. I, I don't want everybody else to hear what I'm saying to you. Just my Kingdom Faith Church family alone. Where are you at in your upper room experience? Out of those five things I've mentioned, do you have a good grasp of your kingdom purpose? Or are you one of those that we're still begging you to come to church? We still beg you to come on prayer meeting. When are you going to grow up? We're still begging you to wake up and join six o'clock prayer. It's still a struggle to get you to get to Bible study. Have you gotten a good grasp of kingdom principles? How many books do you read in addition to your Bible? This year, the Kingdom Faith Church is reading the entire New Testament in 365 days. Where are you? When was the last time you read it? Where are you as far as kingdom power is concerned? How many people have you laid hands on that have been healed? Because we've got to face it now. Let's just, you know, get away from this. Oh, what they should do and what that person should do. And even some believers in the church today have this infantry of becoming masters at criticizing pastors and criticizing ministers. And they haven't done squat. Where are you yourself in your upper room experience? Where are you? Have you grown in power? Is the work of power completed in you? How many people have you laid hands on this year that have been healed? How many people have you prayed for and see the power of God intervene and change the situation around? Where are you? What about kingdom prosperity? Are you still just managing to make ends meet? See, lately the Lord's been just telling me, even as a shepherd, pay attention to the sons and daughters that you're ministering to. Whomever is struggling, it does not matter what they're saying. Something is still wrong. Somehow there's still disobedience going on. Because it must work. It must work. The word of God works. If it's not working for you and I, it's because we're not working it. We can have an outward appearance that we're doing the right thing. But internally, we're doing the wrong thing. And the only way you will know whether you're doing the right thing or not is the fruit. Where is the fruit? The early church had the fruit. They had the fruit. You could see that kingdom purpose was their priority. You could see that they were operating in kingdom principles. You could see that they were operating in power. The Bible says very clearly in the 43rd verse that Many wonders and signs was done through the hands of the apostles. And not just the apostles alone. Acts chapter 6. Many signs and wonders done through the hands of Stephen. Paul. All kinds of miracles that the book of Acts may not have necessarily recorded. Where are you? How complete is your upper room experience? I want you to just think about it for a moment. As I bring this message to a close today, I want to share with you that 47th verse one more time. The Bible said they were praising God and having favor with all the people. I'm going to repeat that again. They were praising God and having favor with all the people. Ladies and gentlemen, this ecclesia was not locked up in a church building. This ecclesia was an ecclesia that met publicly. They met in public arena and public places where even unbelievers could come. When they broke bread, unbelievers ate out of the bread. When they demonstrated generosity, unbelievers in the community were partakers of the generosity. When the power of God was on display, the unbelievers in the community were experiencing the same power of God. And as a result, the Bible said they had favor with all the people. And what was the result of that favor? And then the Lord added to the ecclesia daily those who were 
being saved. The Lord added to the number of the called out ones. The Lord added. The gatherings were growing. The gatherings were growing. The gatherings were growing. Where they come together and worship God was growing. Wherever an apostle would stand and begin to teach the people, the gathering was going. It was in communities. Ladies and gentlemen, they were not going to the synagogues because the high priest and the Sanhedrin didn't want them there. They were not going into the temples. But wherever two or three gathered, the power of God was displayed. The goodness of God was displayed in prosperity. And the Bible said they had favor with all people. I want you to listen to this statement that the Holy Spirit just put so strongly in my heart this weekend. He said, Jesus started his church the way he wanted her to be and function. Now he wants his church to go back to the way he started her. Pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. Virus, virus, virus. Wake up call, wake up call, wake up call. Wake up call to what? What has changed in your life? It's been six weeks or there about now of lockdown. What has changed? What decisions have you made? What has changed in your lifestyle? Are you the same weak, wimpish Christian? Are you still the same person? You can't lift up your hands and praise God. Are you still the same person? You seem like you're, you're schizophrenic or confused about your faith. Are you a real believer? Have you started growing? Do you know your purpose? Are you in the upper room? Are you having... An upper room experience. Once again, I want to remind you, my brothers and sisters. Today, some are yet to make their way into the upper room. It's going to be up to you and I to help some folks find their way into the upper room. Because if we do what we're supposed to do, what the Bible says, they will be added to the ecclesia as many as are being saved. Others are in the upper room but confused about the experience to pursue. Brothers and sisters that are still coming to church but half-hearted. I want you to listen to me clearly. This is not a jumping, cartwheeling message but it's a real one because God said prepare my children. You have a little bit more time with this whole lockdown situation. But prepare my children. You need to come out of this lockdown knowing what to do personally. Don't worry about the ecclesia. Leave that to God and the assignment is given me. But what about you? What are you coming out to do? The Lord said today some are yet to make it into the upper room. Others are there but confused about the experience to pursue. While others who know what to pursue are procrastinating and delaying the completion of their upper room experience. Brothers and sisters, it's time to refocus on the purpose for your upper room experience. At the Kingdom Faith Church, we are so blessed that God decided to lead us and guide us after the pattern of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. He told us five years ago, he said, son, the building you find, call it the upper room. Don't call it church. Call it the upper room. He said, remind yourself all the time that for as long as you're in the upper room, you are going to be pursuing what my disciples pursued in the upper room. The last day the Lord began to teach us, get ready to come out of the upper room. Get ready to come out of the upper room. Get ready to come out of the upper room. At the beginning of this year, I started preaching messages like, grow up and grow out. Grow up and grow out. But the question is, where are you at? Time up, folks. You either go for completion and deployment, or you get left behind. The days of procrastination, And playing games is over. I believe this pandemic is probably going to be one of the last wake up calls we're going to get. Before we begin to slip down into what many of us have read already. And what has been taught in eschatology. If you refuse to get your act together now. You may just be left behind. But this is my encouragement for you. You have come to the upper room. 
you've come to the upper room experience and I'm, I'm talking to myself too because you see the Lord showed me those five and he showed me personally my completion and the fruits that I have in the five but I'm not there yet and I'm not going to fool around anymore no more procrastination it's time to complete our upper room experience I'm going to ask you to just bow your heads now and let's begin to pray. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters. Father, we come before you, Lord. We ask for your help, Lord. I just want you to just respond to this message. Be honest with yourself. Those five categories, where are you at? Be honest with yourself. Are you one of those who is confused about what to do? coming out of this lockdown or are you one of those you've heard pastor daniel over and over again oh nice sermon nice sermon nice sermon but you're still procrastinating you're still playing games with your own destiny you're still fooling around with worldly things when you should be completing your upper room experience ladies and gentlemen begin to cry out to the lord in prayer there's a new God that the Lord is raising. The Lord is raising new sons and daughters in the body of Christ. We will see coming out of this season, new prophets will be raised. Prophets not just unto the cities, but prophets unto the nation. We will see new apostles being raised. We will see new teachers that are teaching the word of God. Not motivational stuff. Not self-help stuff. Not people priding themselves, calling themselves minister. And all you can teach people is how they can move on in their career. Or how they can succeed in business. That's not the gospel of the kingdom. Cry out to the Lord. Father, please help me. Some of us need to repent today and just say, Lord, I just want to repent again and ask you, oh God, to forgive me. My priorities have been wrong. Even throughout this pandemic, I've been afraid, I've been confused. I've enjoyed being at home. But my priorities are still not properly aligned concerning the Christ and his kingdom and the role I have to play. Lord, help me. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Wherever you're joining me from around the world, I want you to call upon the name of the Lord. If you are not yet in an upper room experience, say, Father, please lead me into an upper room. Father, help me to find an ecclesia. Help me to find a church that is not playing games. Help me to find a church that is not a glorified supermarket. Help me to find a church that is not just running as a service industry or business, but a real ecclesia with a heart for God. And if you found one, say, Lord, help me to get rid of all the noise and the distractions in my life so that I can grow in you and so I can make progress in these five categories that the preacher has just talked about. And if you're already making progress, pray, Lord, help me to stay focused. Lord, don't let me drop out in the middle of this race. Lord, help me to get out of the rat race that I might go into my God race. Everything, oh God, that you've been giving this man to preach to me, to teach me over the last few months, Lord, help me to put it into work in my life. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And everybody in agreement said amen. Now, I want to do this for those of you who are watching me right now. And you know you need to give your heart totally and completely to Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, before they could go into the upper room first, they had given their heart to the king. When you give your heart to the king, your heart becomes inclined to the agenda of his kingdom. Now, there's at least two categories of those who are watching me right now. Category number one, you have prayed the prayer of salvation before. But in recent times, you've kind of drifted away. Maybe you've allowed some sin into your life and some compromise and you just, you're no longer feeling confident. You're no longer feeling comfortable as a child of God. Now is your time. 
you can make that decision right now I literally hear in my spirit it's like God is about to say on your max get set go and I'm talking about coming out of this whole lockdown business and the new era we are coming into ladies and gentlemen this is not just going to be an end of a pandemic it's going to be the beginning of a new era as we move closer and closer to the last of the last of days I want you to make up your mind today to just say Lord I'm sorry I received grace from you to stay focused I'm not going to backslide anymore I'm not going to fool around anymore I think enough is enough it's just time for me to stay focused on you category number two you so happen to be listening to this message maybe you just got online you thought it was an accident but it's not an accident so don't touch don't touch your device right now because God led you here category number two you've been invited you've just heard what I have to share maybe you don't understand all of it but the simple gospel is this for God so loved you that he gave his son Jesus to come from heaven into the earth as a man to live on earth sinless no sin no fault but yet allowed him to die for the sins of mankind for your sin for my sin so that those who will put their faith in Jesus Christ will literally become beneficiaries of what he did on the cross and you will not have to die and be separated from God for eternity if you will put your faith in him a simple prayer category number one category number two please repeat this prayer after me say Father God I come before you this day I humble myself before you I confess every sin I've ever committed I ask you to forgive me I choose to put my faith in your son Jesus Christ and the work he did on the cross for me so as I ask you to forgive me I ask you Jesus Christ to come into my life come into my heart I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior I ask you Jesus to redeem my life today I want to be a born again child of God amen now repeat after me also say Holy Spirit of God I open up my heart Holy Spirit coming dwell with me baptize me Holy Spirit help me to be a true convert, convert in Christ baptize me with your spirit and baptize me with fire yes baptize with fire in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth amen and for all of you who have prayed that prayer either for the very first time as a rededication I just want to pray for you right now father in the name of Jesus Christ I ask oh God you know every single one young and old male or female you can see them by your Holy Spirit you know where they are Lord I ask that you would touch each one I ask, oh God, that you will let this be a real conversion experience today. I ask, Father God, that you will show yourself strong and mighty in their lives. I ask, oh God, that you will touch the lives of your sons and your daughters. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I want you to say amen. Amen. And I just pray now for everybody in general, all of you that have been watching me, Kingdom Faith Church family, and those who are not part of the church family. I pray for the grace of the Almighty God to come upon you. I pray for His strength to be made perfect in your weakness. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, deliverance from the distractions of the enemy. I also pray deliverance from ideas that the enemy has used to systematically cause you to go in disobedience with God. Every time God has brought a word of counsel, has sent a man or a woman of God to you, and you decided to go do something else, and then later on you see the fruit of your own decision is not as good as what you could have received just i pray grace to repent grace to change and i ask in the name of jesus christ of nazareth 
The grace to arise and to walk with God. The grace to move forward in your upper room experience. The grace to humbly submit yourself. I come against the spirit of pride that has caused many to break out of their ecclesia and think that they can be something on their own. I pray, Lord, that there will be humility that sons and daughters of God will submit themselves under apostolic leaders, under prophetic leaders, under pastoral leaders that are anointed to not and to empower you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree and I declare you will finish your upper room experience. You will complete your upper room experience. You will not be put on the sideline. You will be deployed and your world will hear of you. Your world will be blessed by you. The grace and the giftings of God in your life will make a difference and bless your world. Whether you're young, you're a teenager, you're not too young to be used by God. David as a teenager took down Goliath and did things that changed the whole nation of Israel. May the hand of the Lord be upon you. May his grace be sufficient for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I feel a strong leading to pray for a woman. There's a pregnant woman that is watching me right now. You've had a lot of questions and it has to do with the nature of the pregnancy and how you got pregnant. But the Lord said that his hand is upon you and he said you trust him. You partner with him in this season. Get rid of all those negative ideas and put your trust in him. Put your trust in him. There's also somebody who has been compromising in a relationship and the Lord is saying if you will trust me and you will let go of the relationship, you will see what I can put into your hands. Another person, uh, you're listening to me right now, one of your biggest challenges is fear of lack. Throughout this pandemic, you've been incredibly afraid. The Lord said, put your trust in me. He said, this is your last warning. If you keep trusting in your employers and trusting in your paycheck, it will fade away. He said, put your trust in me. Repent of the wrong things you've been doing. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Very quickly also, I just want to speak to that person who is experiencing uh, a bit of headache over your eye. It's around this eye area where you're just feeling that strain. I just pray right now that the hand of the Almighty God will come upon you. And I pray healing for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the person with pain in the lower back area, you, it's almost like a nerve because that pain goes down to like your thigh area. I just ask that the power of God will come upon you right now and heal your physical body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And right now God is clearing somebody's chest. I just heard that now. God is clearing somebody's chest. Overnight, there was such a tightness. As a matter of fact, you're a little bit afraid. Oh, what have I contacted? But if you're breathing and breathe out now, you would see that your chest is free. It's been released in the name of Jesus. One last one. I believe the Lord is healing somebody's bowel. Somebody has had a sensitive bowel in recent days. And I pray that the hand of the Lord come upon you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, I didn't plan for that, but I just want to use this as an opportunity to invite you to join us tonight at 6 p.m. Greenwich Meridian time. We're going to have our Kingdom Encounter service and we're going to do something really special today. The Kingdom Faith Church family will be live on Zoom and will be live on YouTube at the same time. So you join us. Make sure you call friends and family. And if you know anybody who is sick and needs healing from the Lord, tell them to come. We are an ecclesia that believe in the power of the Kingdom and that power is working in us kingdom feature totally completely sickness free no virus nobody in hospital we give god the glory we give god the praise and no job losses no losses why because god's kingdom is what we've tapped into in this family we're not in the systems of this world and we give god glory for that we give him glory yes we give him glory hallelujah